What's going on guys? Max here. This video is for the Red Rider 100 I think it is on YouTube. Wanted me to shoot a little sharpening video for him. I finally got my camera at a decent angle. You can sort of see what's going on here. I hope. Anyway, we're doing a uh, Tojiro or Torjo. I have a hard time pronouncing that. This is the uh, the Shirogami White Steel number two, I believe. Um, this is the 150 millimeter millimeter petty. I've uh, removed the sticker in case you didn't notice. But anyway, you can see I've done some thinning to this knife in the past. Um, I've sharpened it a few times. It's really just a joy to sharpen, and it is absolutely hair popping sharp right now. Right away. Um, the th actual thinness of the edge is pretty good, but since I'm going to be removing metal and resharpening and forming a burr, I'm going to thin the knife. Alright, today I've decided to use my Shapton Pro Stones simply because, sorry Red Rider, I just don't feel like waiting for my King Stones to soak. They're completely dried out. They'd probably have to spend 20 minutes soaking. So, we're going to start with the old King, or the old Shapton Stones. I'm going to start with my 1000 grit which is considered a medium coarse. Nope, oh, I almost forgot my stone holder. Just a second. Sorry about that. All right, now the Shapton Pro 1000 is, um, it's pretty coarse for a 1000 grit stone, I must say. It's, uh, it's pretty coarse. I think it's about 14, 14.7 micron or something. You can really set a pretty good bevel with it. Let me see if I move this forward a little. Maybe that, yeah, that looks fine. Splash and Go Stones using the lovely Shapton glass base. Uh, you should get this. This thing is awesome. It is worth every penny. So is the diamond on glass lapping plate if you're using glass stones, but that's a different story. Go ahead and wet our stone here. Now um, you got to be careful when you thin these knives because if you go over this shinogi line, which is basically your shoulder, you're going to make your knife a little messed up, alright? But anyway, here we go. So first things first, boy this stone's drinking a little water today. I'm going to thin the knife, we're going to lay the knife flat, and we're going to find the bevel by bringing the knife up onto uh, the actual bevel. And in this case, I'm going to thin more towards towards the actual uh, edge rather than the uh, original blade thickness. So I'm going to use just a little more pressure like this than I normally would. Okay, And so this is what it looks like now up there. We're going to change the way that looks. And if you see all the cloudy stuff, that's actually factory set finish they've done to kind of show the clad steel. Even though the clad steel does go down farther than that factory finish. Basically out of the factory it was done on a big huge, uh, one of those big freaking water wheels. So it's a little bit hollow ground, and the reason that uh, that stuff is still there is because I haven't gotten down to that and made it a perfect flat grind yet. Alright, so start on this side. Oh, stone's not. There we go. Just break everything first. Yep, and now that happens. Well, this video is off to a good start. You never want to get these wooden handles wet, guys. Never want to. Alright, but anyway, so, I'm going to start by thinning. Wow, that thing just keeps falling out of there. Thinning that grind. And now my freaking table's moving all over the place. This is probably going to be a pretty long video. Um, because I don't really know how to do video editing, I didn't buy any video editing software, yada yada yada. So, sorry about that. Now these Shapton Pro Stones work really, really good on carbon steels. And actually they're called Pro or traditional Pro Stones because this is actually their intended purpose, our traditional style. 
Japanese uh, carbon steel knives. Now as you can see we started working that away a little bit. Let me go ahead and see if I can't get this stupid block to fit in here again. I don't know why this is falling out now. Alright, do a little bit more. Down here, it's always a bit thicker, so you want to try to focus a little more right down at the base. Try to get some of that thinned out. Okay. Um, do a little more out here at the very front. Okay, it didn't skip over the shinogi line, that's a good thing. Now, for this particular knife, um, I'm going to go ahead and use the switching hands technique. Um, generally with a knife without much curve, I really prefer this technique. If it was like, you know, like a slicing knife or something, I would definitely stay with the same hand. But okay. So again, we're flat, now we're up a little. Let's start thinning. Thinning, thinning, thinning. Not even sharpening the knife yet. I'm telling you, man, this is going to be a long video, Red Rider. Some of you guys might just want to go ahead and skip forward. If anyone else is watching this. But no one really watches my videos, anyways, except for a couple of you guys who are cool. Okay, back at the, uh, the base a little bit more. Okay, now, see we've actually started to work that completely flat over there. Um, I'm going to grab, well, I'll just use this, I guess. Alright, wipe the blade. Now, in this video, I'm not going to bother polishing the secondary edge, or else right now, I would switch to a higher grit stone and go ahead and get a nice polish on there which does look really nice and the 5000 grit Shapton leaves an excellent polish but uh, I'm gonna go ahead and skip that for this video I just want to show uh, my buddy here how I go about sharpening this knife the thing is these knives are really easy to sharpen because they're designed to be sharpened they're designed to be thin they're just meant to be used it's great it's like uh, some knives out there just are not not easy to maintain um, this is another thing I do when I get into um, talking about super steels and stuff okay this steel is like a 6162 uh, super carbon steel nowadays we have all this M390 and S30V that are in the 60s and oh they're so hard to sharpen they are try sharpening S30V on these stones it is not easy it's not a fun time at all um, however you can sharpen this stuff just fine on it. So what's that tell you? You know, if a steel is hard to sharpen, like S30V or S90V or 3V, I don't actually know how 3V is. It's a carbon steel. I'm sure it's not bad. If a steel is hard to sharpen, then it's just not high quality cutlery. It's too hard to sharpen. You know, things should be easy to maintain. I hate S30V for that. Okay, so feel on the edge. Feels nice and thin. We did our job thinning it out. Could have went to like a 400 grit stone, but you know, as long as you do this every time you sharpen, you should be alright. Didn't cross my shinogi line, we're good. So, I'm moving on to the edge. Um, I'm going to kind of follow the edge I already had before. So, we're on that uh, thinning bevel. Lift it up. There's my angle right about there.
See how very little steel is really loading up on the stone? And uh, Splash and Go stones are known for loading up. That, that's a sign that the stone is grinding this steel very well, the fact that it's not loading up. That means the steel is matching up with the stone fantastically well. Got to make sure we get that tip because the tip on Japanese knives are ever so important and ever so easy to sharpen. Okay, we have a huge bear worked up. That didn't take much time at all. I do need a little right at the base. That's it. You've done one side of this knife. I'm telling you, yes, it's abrasion resistant, super hard steel, but the actual edge is just so thin in cross section and in bevel uh, width. It's just they're very easy to sharpen. People don't realize this. Why Japanese kitchen knives are far superior to the Western, in my personal opinion. Alright, so. I'm pushing away into the stone. I'm not really grinding on them. I'm pushing and then relaxing. These pro stones are very hard. I generally don't like hard water stones, but... Heal a little bit more. A little more right down here. Okay, so we've rolled a burr on both sides. Now I'm just going to kind of do the same thing again, but just do fewer strokes here. This is the problem with switching hands, is you constantly have to dry a hand and then switch over. I'm going to do some uh, strapping strokes. Let's see what we got here. Wow, lots of teeth. I mean, um, has a big old burr left on it, but let me tell you, that edge is getting sharp. That is getting sharp already. Got to minimize that burr as much as possible, because remember, the cleaner and sharper you can get the knife at this grit, the better it's going to be at the next grit. That's something uh, Jay Davis said in one of his Edge Pro videos, and it's just so true whether you're on the Edge Pro or not. 
the better the sharper you the better and cleaner you get at this grit the sharper it'll be at the next grit but I'm kind of spending a lot of time here um, okay now it's another thing about these Japanese knives the burrs they just pop right off and that is a toothy toothy edge all right so I'm gonna switch stones here get rid of our 1000 grit and um, so I'm going to do something I don't normally do. I'm going to actually go over to the 2000. All right. Kind of do a little step up progression here. Now the 2000 is so the other thing, the other stone was at 14.7 micron. The 2000 is at 7.4 micron, I believe, somewhere in there. And now we're just going to do more strapping strokes. Look at that. Love that load up on the stone. Beautiful. Two thousand grit stone is very nice. Pro stones are really nice. Um, I have a feeling they're going to be discontinuing pro stones pretty soon, just because they have those uh, HC glass stones or whatever there. And um, they're pretty much the same thing. I love Shepton glass stones, by the way. I think they're my favorite. I'm torn between them and Nanwa Super. I love Nanwa Super stones. They just leave the nicest freaking edges. And they are so soft and creamy. Glass stones cut really fast, though. Now, you can sharpen your whole knife this way if you want, just doing these uh, strapping strokes. If you've ever watched Harleston Stanley do it, this is all he does. He only uses these, uh, these trailing strokes. I'm not going to bother flattening any of these stones in front of you guys because it's just a waste of time. It's coming up. You can hear little bits of the burr popping off. According to Shapton, by 2000 grit, your edge should be completely formed. And I would say, see we got the thumbtack point, it's actually, probably hear it, that's how you know when you're point sharp. That's a Carter Cutler technique, the thumbtack test. We're about to go to the next stone. This is one of my favorite stones. Okay, next stone. That was quick, right? We are going to go ahead and get our 5,000. Finish this knife off. Okay, 5,000 grit. This is a sweet stone here. This is about... This stone is under 3 micron, it's like a 2.85 micron or something at 5,000. The only reason I know that is um, Shapton glass stones are, uh, they have a 4,000 and that is a 3.68 micron or something. This being a 5 I think puts it just under 3 micron. Okay, so now we will repeat. Ooh, got some stuff on here. 
sandiness or something. Very hard stone, this 5,000. Not a lot of feedback. That's the thing. Harder stones have less feedback. King stones have a ton of feedback. I actually really like the 1,000 grit king stone. The color of the stone reminds me of Laffy Taffy or something, like a purple Laffy Taffy with the textures on it and everything. Love this stone. This was the Shapton Pro Stones are my first good quality, uh, well, actually my first Japanese water stones. And when I got this 5000, I was just like, oh. Um, a lot of people like to use the 8000. A lot of people say the 8000 is just the slower version the 5,000. I'm not sure who to believe on that one. I know my 8,000 shaft and glass stone leaves an insanely polished edge. Like, too polished. Okay. Oh, yeah. Lighten up my pressure. some alternating. Sorry guys, this just takes a while. Oh man, that thing is just biting me, dude. It is absolutely biting my flesh. So I'm just going to do a couple more, like, extremely light passes. Because the knife is pretty much done. Just kissing that stone. I'm telling you, these knives just want to get sharp. Some knives don't want to get sharp. They will, but they just don't want to. They want to just sit there and be dull and be done on a grinder. That's starting to get kind of polished, actually. So there's our little edge, if I can zoom into it. That tiny little edge. That's what you want, is a tiny little edge, because you've thinned the blade sufficiently. Um, Paper-wise, don't have any phone book paper with me, because I did this kind of unprepared. And I am going to strap the knife on some plain leather. Get a piece of paper here. I'm done with this, but I am absolutely positive that this knife is plenty sharp, just as it is. I mean, just absolutely push cuts paper with no problem at all. And the knife is freaking sharp, dude. 
no problem. Now this is how you tell that the tip is sharp, right here. You should be able to just, oops, sorry, it's not in view. You should easily be able to just cut the paper, like, without really trying to at all. It should just pop right through the paper, like that. That's a sharp tip. Actually, the tip has a bit of fur on it. All right, well, that's pretty much all you have to do. You really could have skipped the 2000 grit stone. Um, what I would do now to finish this knife would be to take it to my piece of uh, Chef Knives to Go uh, horse butt leather and I would just give it a couple strokes just to kind of just make sure it's completely deburred. But there you go. There you go, Red Rider. That's all you need to do. You really only need the two stones, bro. I just like using the 2000 because I have it. That's all. Um, and if you polish this back bevel, like I did not, see that still has a 1000 grit shine to it. If you polish that back bevel, you won't have to worry about rust and corrosion nearly as much. Um, when you cut foods like onions and stuff with this, it's going to get all blue and it's going to change color. You just got to keep these knives wiped off, keep them dry, keep them clean while you use them, and it will treat you well. Alright buddy, see ya!